And now we're joined by the newest member of the New York Football Giants, defensive end, edge rusher, outside linebacker, take your pick. He is Brian Burns. Brian, nice to meet you, man. Welcome aboard. Nice to meet you. I'm glad to be here. All right, so how would you describe yourself? Defensive end, edge player, outside linebacker? Uh, I would just say I'm all around just a weapon. You know what I'm saying? You can use me many ways, rushing, dropping, whatever it may be. But, uh, yeah, you can just call me a weapon. Have you been able to familiarize yourself at all with Shane Bowen and the type of defense he might run here with you in the Giants? Not yet. Not yet. We didn't we didn't talk for too long. It was more of a just a greeting. Very good. Watching your tape at Carolina, it looked like they had you standing up a lot, pretty wide outside mm-hmm. of the offensive tackle. And if you watch Shane Bowen, what he did in Tennessee, same type of stuff. A lot of wide nine, guys getting after the rusher. Is that the type of system that you think your skill set would fit best in? Definitely. Uh, especially being that wide and, and really being being able to pin my ears back. That's definitely what I'll thrive at, you know. So um I'm very excited that that's what if that's what we're doing. <laughs> I feel like in Carolina, you were standing up more than a three-point stance. Is that where you're more comfortable? Do you care? Does it matter to you? It doesn't. Um, it doesn't, really. It just it, it depends on what I, what I really want to do, depending on uh, who I'm going against and what he struggles with. What do you think the advantages are to being in a three-point stance versus standing up or vice versa? Well, if you're standing up, you can see a lot more. So reverse reverses, sweeps, uh, any, anything of that nature, play actions, you can see that a lot more when you're coming from a two-point stance. When you're down, you can get more of an explosive burst off the ball. But uh, it's give and take. So you have to decide decide which one you want to do and which situation. No, absolutely. And I think you've shown your versatility, right? What do you think the most underrated part of your game is that people don't talk about enough? Uh, I keep saying this is my IQ, uh, honestly, because I understand the game to – uh, somewhat of a, a degree that people don't understand. Um, and I would say I pretty much developed that from, you know, my OGs, my, my vets, and uh, really just just really listening to to everybody's perspective. So, Where do you think that shows up on the field? Uh, situational. So situational, in the situational aspect, depending on what situation we're in, depending on if it's two minute, end of the half, end of the game, uh, all that comes into play. Uh, and also when it comes up to, you know, setting up your chest, your chest match, because people think, you know, going against a tackle all game is just, you know, just going is not. You know, you have to set up your pieces accordingly, depending on what you want to do when it's when it's time to get that money. You know what I mean? So you got to set your rushes up, basically. How, how much do you study the offensive tackle you're going up against the week heading into a game so you can put that proper game plan together? Uh, the whole week, I would say. But, I mean, if, if we're in, a, in an average game week, um, you know, I usually probably start my study on the off day, uh, just really just him. I wouldn't watch like the uh, the rest of the offense. I really just watch him for tendencies and and uh, whatever he struggled with. Um, so that'll be the main thing. But I'll study him throughout the week because Saturday night I really don't like to watch too much film because I don't want to you know keep cluttering my brain with you know what ifs and all that. So. I'll kind of just relax on Saturday. Yeah, you want to be able to react and play instinctively, right, and not yeah. be thinking too much. Mm-hmm. You got to study two tackles though. Because watching you on tape, you're on the left side and the right side almost evenly half the time, right? Mm-hmm. Do you have a preference left or right? No, I don't. I rest both sides. Do you think there is an advantage? I, I have curiosity, but this is a kind of a debate in the analytics community. Is there an advantage to rushing on the quarterback's blind side? Um. Yeah, I would say just because he can't see, you know, when you when you're rushing from the the side that he's looking at, you know, he can he can avoid you easier. But uh, they that's usually why they put their best tackle on that side. So you know, it kind of goes hand in hand. Absolutely. You mentioned your variety of pass rush moves. Mm-hmm. Look at it, all your sacks. You start with the speed. You can go speed to power. You got the long arm, inside spin, outside spin, the little inside counter. How did you pick up all those pass rush moves, and and how has your pass rush repertoire grown? since you've gotten into the league from Florida State? Uh, it's definitely grown. Um, I'd say it's definitely grown. I mean, I, I acquired a lot of those, those, those rush moves from my brother and, you know, just watching film, watching certain guys that I think resemble me. So, um, but i say it is, it's definitely grown more from a standpoint of when to use it more than using it. Um, you know, I feel like you don't have to go into a game with, seven different pass rush moves. I think you really only need about two or three that you've mastered and a counter. So basically, and then you talked about you set them up with one or two, and then mm-hmm. do you wait for the big third down in the fourth quarter to whip out the counter? Is is that part of your process as you go through the game? Yeah, it's somewhat of a feeling, I would say, because, you know, um, you can be whooping a guy all day on first and second down, but if the ball's coming out in 1.2 seconds, then you're not getting there regardless. 
So, I mean, definitely waiting and, and setting up those pass rush moves for a good third and long, third and 15, where he has to hold the ball and he has to get a big chunk play, is definitely going to, you know, that's definitely going to be more of a, a kicker. To your previous point, sacks are out of your control in a lot of ways, right? You can Damn win man. if the ball comes out, there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. So how much is compiling those sacks just being relentless, right? And just even if maybe they, they stymie on your first move, that you keep going. And how many sacks do come out of just never giving up on a play? Yeah, you got to be a stubborn cat to uh, <laughs> to play to play D, D in, D tackle any of that because you know, like you just said, sometimes you could be whooping somebody all game and, and it just doesn't turn out in your way. And there's other times you can barely win and it just be that one play. You know what I'm saying? That you get the sack or a strip sack or whatever. So you just got to be stubborn in that aspect and just continue to go. That's where the relentless part, the relentless part, come in. How has your run defense uh, grown and improved since you've been in the NFL? It's improved a lot. Um, I would definitely say and. The main thing I would say is the the tackle for losses, being able to, you know, uh, do a couple stunts on the line and use my quickness to my advantage, then just sitting on the edge is, is definitely something that I enjoy because um, it, it allows me to make a play. So, You mentioned you were in the same draft class as Dexter Lawrence. We yep. were joking before we started yeah. as we were sitting here watching the draft in 2019 and you got picked right before the Giants selected Dexter Lawrence uh, by the Carolina Panthers. You said in our in the media call you had a relationship with Dexter a little bit from being drafted with him. Mm -hmm. uh, you recruited Kayvon Thibodeau to Florida mm -hmm. State. Have you had a chance to talk to those two guys or anyone else on the team about what to expect walking into this building and becoming a giant? Oh, no, not not yet. Uh, a lot of things been going pretty fast right now. I've been, I've been on the move, so I haven't really had the time to sit down and call any of them. But uh, I definitely text Dexter. We, we talked a little bit uh, just about being excited that, you know, I'm joining the squad and whatnot. Uh, talked to Bobby. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Just me pretty much just meeting and greeting. Now, you talked about some of the guys, Bobby Okereke playing next to you or behind your linebacker, depending on where you are. Mm -hmm. Inside, you have Dexter. Opposite side, you have Kayvon. Deontay Banks, a very talented outside corner. Can you envision how you're going to fit in with the rest of this talent and what you guys can do together as a group? Definitely. Like I said, I think we're really going to grow as a group. You know, we're all young and talented. Um, I really feel like we're going to really feed off each other because we all kind of can relate, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Like being young. But um, it's definitely going to be a, a, a couple a – couple stepping stools to get there. Like, we're going to take it one day at a time. We're going to practice hard. And, um, I mean, I'm just definitely ready to get with those guys and, and start this bond. Now, your nickname is Spider. You're a big Spider-Man guy. Yeah. Is this destiny that Spider-Man finally comes to New York? <laughs> hey, it might be, man. It's God's timing. You know, it's not my timing. So, it might be. Now, it might be awkward to live in Queens and commute here, though. It's it, it's a while out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just right? saying it's like an hour and a half across <laughs> Manhattan. So, I'm not, I'm not sure that's going to work. But <laughs> is, is that cool, though? I, I know you have a love for Spider-Man and just mm. kind of being in New York now, no one kind of that's what that spider-man's yeah. hood you know what nah, i mean it's real cool it's real cool man like like i said like all this is happening real fast i'm just super excited you know i can't wait to get with the guys but it's it, that that part of the that part of the deal is it's just crazy <laughs> has it has it sunk in or are you still kind of floating on cloud nine a little bit here? i'm still in the clouds <laughs> I'll, I'll be coming down soon i'm still in the clouds right now how, how much time have you spent in new york in terms of like vacationing or fun I haven't haven't at all mm -mm. anything right. that you've kind of had on your bucket list that you thought about that now that you're in New York, that, all right, I got to check this. I got to check that. No, nah, I ain't going to lie. I really haven't. You know, uh, being from Florida, I just like to stay in Florida <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> most of the time during the offseason, I just stay home. Uh, I wouldn't say that, but uh, I know I've definitely heard a lot of great things about, you know, New York. And uh, it's the city that never sleeps and there's a lot going on. You know, so I'm going to definitely explore that and, and see what's, what's, what, what New York is really about. Now, after putting that rush hour clip on Twitter, I thought you were gonna say go to the Nick game, man. No? <laughs> oh no, that's definitely on the list. That's that, but that's that's like, yeah, that's like it has to happen. Um, I'm a big movie buff at, by the way. Like, yeah, that's why I put on that clip. So I, that was you, rush hour two, correct? If I'm not mistaken, that's yeah, not the that first. Was, that was that was rush two. hour. That was two, right? Yeah, that's that what I two. thought. Are you a big basketball fan? No, nah, it's not super big, but you uh, aren't you aren't a Heat fan, are you? You know, I'm a Heat fan. No, nah, I'm more of a. I, I follow kind of players. All right, that's good. Yeah. You don't want to be a Miami Heat fan in New York. That That's not going to work oh, up here. Cool. No, 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 no. That, that is not going to work up here. <laughs> so that, that's cool. Uh, if, if you were to want to say one thing to Giant fans about what they're getting in Brian Burns as a player, what would you want to tell them? One thing, um, I would I would just say they're getting a leader. And uh, when, I, when I mean by leader, it doesn't have to be vocally. It can be by example. Um, so, I mean, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to remain humble. I'm a team guy. You know, I don't let anything really get to my head. I stay poised. So um, I would definitely say that they get, they're getting a leader, a natural leader. Well, Brian, we can't wait to see you uh, apply your trade on the field with the Giants. Welcome aboard, sure. man. 
Thank you very Appreciate much. Brian you. Burns, newest member of the Giants. Can't wait to see him rush the passer at MetLife Stadium come yes, September. Sir.